What's up YouTube? So in this video, I'll be doing a small upgrade to the sound system in this Camry wagon. So the stock setup has six speakers, two six and a half inch speakers and the door panels up front, some tweeters here in the D pillar, and some six by nines up here in the tailgate. Now keep in mind, this car is over 25 years old. So eventually I gotta swap out the entire sound system, but I'm gonna tackle these six by nines first in this video. So this panel is really easy to take off. Basically everything in this Camry, you can just pull off with your hand. So I've already gone ahead and done that. Um, so you can pull off, you know, the trim, very simple. It's just held on by some clips. And then uh, the six by nines, they're just held in by four screws. Just gotta drill, take them out. But here is, you know, the stock uh, six by nine. You know, it's not very beefy at all. Um, here's the Toyota logo in the back. You can see it's a 15 watt speaker. Um, and I went ahead and actually just kind of took it apart just so you can kind of see, you know, how puny that voice coil is. Um, even this cone right here. This thing has like the structural integrity of a paper towel. It's so flimsy, like I'm kind of shocked that, you know, they kind of put this material in a car. And so for comparison, here is what I will be replacing it with. So this is actually an Infinity Kappa 6x9 that I got on sale. But you know what? This is so much more heavy duty than the stock speaker. It's got a much larger voice coil. It's actually a three-way speaker. It's got two tweeters here. And the cone material is much stiffer. This is going to give us a much better bass response. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy in. One thing I was worried about is whether or not I'll have enough mounting depth to fit this much larger speaker. But you know what? Once I put this in, it actually sits flush with the surface, so we have plenty of clearance to fit this much heavier basket. The problem is, um, the holes on the new speaker don't exactly line up with the stock mounting locations. So what I'll actually do is kind of use the old stock speaker to trace out a bracket that I can use to custom mount the new speaker. That way, it'll be held in much more securely. All right, now let's go ahead and attach the bracket. So the bracket is on nice and tight now. And I went ahead and spliced a longer wire to the factory connector just so we can run it to the speaker. I'm actually surprised at the gauge thickness of the factory wiring. It was, seemed to be about 16 gauge, which is actually really thick. Normally you see something like 20, or 22, some really thin factory wiring. But, you know, this, these early Toyotas, they actually put a lot of uh, money into building a quality vehicle. And seeing that thick factory speaker wiring is really surprising. But before we go ahead and mount the speaker, I'm gonna put in some sound deadening just to absorb some of those vibrations. I don't wanna make it stick anywhere just yet because once it touches something, it grabs hold real tight. So. in a good spot now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of push it down by hand first just to get that contour really sticking well. And then I'm gonna use a little roller just to smooth it out and make sure there's really good adhesion to the surface. This Noiko is nice because it has these little air pockets that kind of uh, bubble up before you apply it. But once you kind of roll over those air pockets, they sit nice and flat. And that's kind of like a good indicator of when you know that you've really applied it really well. Now, I've only put on one small piece in just a tiny spot. But when you knock on the tailgate, you can actually hear a little difference in the sound. So here is before. And here's after. Now 
You can hear how the before has a little tinny sound. So that's what the sound deadener helps to reduce, kind of this panel vibration. Next, I'm gonna apply this layer of closed cell foam. This foam will help to kind of further absorb any uh, high frequency pitches and then also act as a thermal insulator. We don't really care about the thermal properties, but it will help kind of break up the sound vibrations even more. Now let's do another knock test. This side definitely sounds way more solid. All right, now that the speaker is mounted, we're gonna go ahead and use some self-tapping screws to get this secured to the bracket. We're using the self-tapping screws because there is some sheet metal behind here in some spots. So these self-tapping screws go into the sheet metal, no problem. So just two screws in, and this thing is extremely sturdy. And then now let's go ahead and put in the final two screws. All right guys, so the speakers are in, and we've got the trim panel back on. But as you can see, we do have a little bit of a clearance issue right here. So what we're gonna do is just kind of mark this trim piece where it's touching the speaker and then just kind of hack it off to make sure there's no interference problems. And again, we have the same issue on this side on um, where you got the surround of the speaker hitting the trim panel. So we're just gonna mark it where it's touching and then just do a little uh, grinding just to make sure there's no interference. For the cutting, I'm just gonna use a Dremel with a small cutoff wheel and this should get the job done. Okay, so the trim panel has now been cut down. You can see there's plenty of clearance between the speaker and the trim panel now. Same thing with this side. All right guys, here's the final product. Everything is all buttoned back up together. I will say that these speakers are a definite improvement over the stock setup, but they do need an amplifier for sure. I'm running these off the stock head unit right now. Um, so they're probably receiving like under 20 watts of power um, and the recommended RMS rating for these is 110 watts so I will definitely need to install an amplifier in my setup. I've been listening to these speakers for a while now and while they do sound better than stock they are not living up to the hype of what an Infinity Kappa should sound like. I really think they need the amplifier hooked up to them so I went ahead and bought a 4 channel amp so let's go ahead and get this power wire installed and hook this guy up. So the battery is here on the driver's side and you have two options on how you want to get the wire into the car. The first option is to actually drill a hole through the firewall right there. Um, if you had a manual car, that's where your uh, clutch parts would go. Um, so you can drill a hole right through there and it comes out on the other side. Let me show you that. So here in the footwell, you can see right where your wire would come out if you drilled a hole. but. I don't want to drill any holes in this car and it is a little awkward to get a drill up in here so I'll show you the second alternative. Option two is to go through the fender. So we already have a bunch of wires going this way so we can just follow that path as well and if we go inside the car uh, you'll see right up there um, you got a bunch of wires coming through the fender um, so we can just go through that rubber boot and follow that pathway as well. Okay, so I took out about nine screws, um, including the screws for the mud guard. So once you take out, you know, just these couple of screws up in this area right here, um, you can just yank this fender out the way. Alright, 
so now we have pretty clear access to that rubber boot right there so now we're just going to fish that power wire right through that rubber boot all right so what i've done is actually poke um a coat hanger through there you can kind of see it peeking out right there so what i'm going to do is tape um, a power wire to the coat hanger and just pull it through the grommet from the inside. Okay, so our power wire is now taped up. Now let's go ahead and pull it through. Here it is on the other side. You can see just how easy it was to pull through. And then up there, you can see how it's just kind of coming in along with the rest of that wire harness. So we pulled in all the excess. And then I also put a little bit of split loom tubing on this wire just so you know it won't be rubbing against this metal right here. Don't want to short out the wire. Next, we'll take apart a head unit trim panel. So we'll do that just by inserting our little removal tool in the bottom and pulling out. And then just doing that, it'll easily pry out. And then from there, just kind of get it loose and it should come out. There we go. And then all you gotta do is just unplug the cigarette lighter. And then from there, you should just be able to remove the screws and this unit should slide out. So the previous owner had this JVC head unit. It's kind of a basic unit. It doesn't even have Bluetooth, not a whole lot of output connections. But I don't feel like spending money on a new head unit at this time. It's gonna work with what I have. So the previous owner had these connections soldered um, what i'm going to do is just kind of cut these connections have um the high level uh, head unit output go to my amp and then send that back to the factory wiring harness so let me just get all this uh wiring cleaned up and then i'll show you guys the next step if you guys don't have a wire stripper a really easy way to strip wires is to just get a small candle or a lighter just kind of burn the end of the wire a little bit Get a little plier and then pull it off and then you get perfectly clean stripped wire so to make things easier i took out the front driver's seat and then all i did was kind of fish this nine conductor wire and rca wire for the subwoofer um, back to the dash and then essentially it just goes behind the carpet you can see right there or wrap all the way around and then just kind of hide everything behind the carpet and then it's gonna come down here and then there was this cutout here for the foot uh, ventilation so essentially just bring the wire down under the carpet it comes out here and then for the speaker wire going to the trunk Again, just kind of route it underneath the carpet along here. And then, you know, your clothes hanger is your best friend. So just sneak it where you need to and attach your wire, pull it through. This is always good for trying to find the best path for the wire where you might not be able to see where the hole is, but you can definitely always get something through. Okay guys, everything is hooked up. For the ground location, I used um, that seat bolt right there. And then, you can see everything is tidied up, fits neatly underneath the seat. Um, the amp I ended up buying was um, the JBL MX280 uh, 4 channel amp. It's really compact and it actually puts out a good amount of power. Um, I just hooked this thing up and did a little test run uh, just to make sure everything was working. And already it sounds so much better um, than without the amp, uh, even before tuning. And again, uh, here's another look at the JL amp. It's really compact. I um, really like it. Uh, the sub amp I had laying around for a while. It's a pretty old one. 
uh, JBL, but you know, it still works, so I'm just gonna reuse it. But these new uh, mini amplifiers, um, they you know put out a lot of power um, for their compact size, and because they're so small, you know, you have a lot of flexibility in where you want to mount it. Here's the final result. Here you can see the power wire, how it's routed. And then once we get inside, can't see any wires anywhere. Everything is all hidden. Dash is all back together. And then as we come to the back, you can see there's plenty of space still. The amps are underneath the seat and there's no interference there. And then finally, we got the sub in the back. One slight issue is that I like to keep the cargo cover rolled out, which is for privacy. But when I do that, these 6x9s stand up down here below the cover. So that blocks all the tweeters on the high frequencies from coming out. They kind of get blocked by this cargo cover. So that's kind of why you have these um, D-pillar tweeters up here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, swap out these D-pillar tweeters with some uh, Alpine Type R's, just so we can have much better clarity on uh, coming from the rear. These are also 4 ohm, and luckily the type bars are also 4 ohm, so this should be a good match. Next, just applying some double sided tape onto the crossover. We'll just slip this back here where we have some space. And then just push it in. Nice and secure. You can't even tell it's there. Next, using a Metro harness connector, we'll connect to the factory wiring. With just a few layers of tape, this thing is really snug in there. It's pretty solid. It's not moving at all. Now, all we gotta do is just tuck in all the wires and make this look nice and neat. Finally, I can pop in the trim panel. There was this little part sticking out right here, so I just sanded it down, so that way there'll be clearance for the tweeter. Now, we can just pop this in. There we go. Now we got some type bars hidden in a D-pillar. Originally, I was not going to change the front speakers, but after upgrading the rear with Infinities and the Alpines, you could definitely hear a difference in clarity between the front and the back. Also, when you turned up the volume, the fronts would clearly distort before the rear. To remove the door card, all you have to do is take off the trim piece on the door handle, remove the little black triangle piece of plastic near the A-pillar and then take out a couple screws and push pins. After that, simply pull up on the door card um, as it hangs from the window and then once it's released, all you have to do is just unclip the connectors and you're done.
let's get down to business. Mama, Mama, I'm let my heart speak. Oh